Since starting Giving Back TV, I've realized just how hard it is to be in the outdoor industry. What may look like a dream life from the outside comes with its fair share of obstacles and roadblocks. It means traveling hundreds of thousands of miles each year. It means being away from your home and loved ones for extended periods of time. It means learning to function with little or no sleep until you're at near exhaustion. We've dealt with dangerous individuals in the jungle, had close calls with wildlife, ended up in emergency rooms, and escaped death on more than one occasion. Despite all this, our fire and vision keeps pushing us forward time and time again. When people ask when we're going to hang this up, I always have the same answer. We're just getting started. In this week's episode, my good friend Antonello Merriweather and his son Claudio traveled all the way from Italy to meet me in the great state of New Mexico as Antonello went after Rocky Mountain Elk. Once we made it to camp, we got all settled in, looked around the lodge at all the incredible taxidermy, and then headed to the range to make sure the rifle was on. So we're in New Mexico this week. Um, a real good friend of mine, Antonello, flew in from Italy, uh, him and his son, Claudio. And uh, Antonello's here on an elk hunt and a mule deer hunt, kind of a combination hunt. So that's what we're gonna be doing this week. We're down here uh, for a week. It's uh, late October, early November. So the elk rut is over and it's kind of before their deer rut. But, um, you know, they have a lot of elk down here. So we're hoping, that that bodes in our favor. Mule deer numbers are actually pretty low in this unit, so we know that's going to be a challenge. But we're going to hit it hard for five days and uh, see what we can turn up. This area we were hunting was incredibly vast, and you can see for miles. Our strategy was to climb to high vantage points, get on our optics, and see if we could turn up some bulls as they moved in and out of these junipers. We would all scour this countryside for a while, and if we didn't see anything, we would move to a new location and continue glassing. We had to let our optics work first to try and locate some elk, and then formulate a plan to begin our stock. This one morning, we located a small group of cows and calves feeding out in front of us. They were milling around and feeding, but they were also talking up a storm. Now this was long after the elk rut, so we thought it was a little odd to hear them talking so much. One cow in particular kept feeding back towards us, and once we looked down on the fence line, we then realized why she didn't want to leave. So we've been hearing these cows all day, and this one cow won't leave the fence, and uh, we look down here and it looks like there's a calf stuck in the fence, so. We're headed down to try and get this calf unstuck.
aspetta unstuck but we think it's been here for a while there was frost on it and it's trying to move but we're not sure if it's gonna make it so we pretty much did all we can right now there you go there you go oh we got it to get this calf up and it's been stuck we think for at least a day his back legs just aren't working but every time we help him he's getting farther and farther so we're gonna let him rest and try again in a few minutes so we went over Isaac and I kind of got the elk on his front legs and it's actually holding himself up but the back the end does not want to work um, he keeps calling for his mom and of course mom took off rightfully so she was afraid but I don't know this little guy he's alert and I if he can just get up I think we're gonna be okay as you can see the calf behind me um, still struggling but he is ears are up and he's moving his head and he's calling for his mom so we're hoping it's just going to take some time before he warms up but you know all you anti-hunters that uh think we just come out to murder animals and that's all we're just bloodthirsty well this is proof that we're not um we're trying to save this calf's life um we're the ones out here in the field we're the ones out here watching these animals we're the ones out here protecting these animals in situations like this or with hunters dollars for conservation so I would highly encourage any of you anti-hunters or non-hunters um, to match me. Tell me what you're doing for wildlife. And uh, I hope we can all come together and uh, work for the common good, which is protecting wildlife for generations to come. Giving Back TV is brought to you by Camera Bullets, City Motor Company, Huntech Pro, Kanadi Elite Taxidermy Studio, Kenadrek Boots, Kafaru International, and True Flight Adventures. Yeah, after. Okay. I was glad we were all there that day to help that calf get unstuck from that fence. If not, who knows how brutal of a death he would have faced. As we continued our search for elk, we hiked into a vantage spot overlooking a gorgeous valley below us. We got out the spot and scope, and then we began to glass the entire area, hoping to locate some bulls. Let's 
stiamo su un colle diciamo una, più una montagna che un colle dove dominiamo una valle spettacolare a perdita d'occhio non si vede una casa spettacolare veramente speriamo di avvistare qualche animale qualche bello animale e vedremo dopo l'accompagnatore che è lui che ho davanti cosa deciderà ok a dopo stiamo stiamo osservando tre, tre, tre animali due si stanno incornando e però sono molto molto distanti Stiamo parlando di circa 2, 2 miglia e mezzo, il, il telemetro non, non li misura. Ah, so we just spotted some elk and some mule deer. We're gonna move on down. Um, hopefully make a play on the deer. If not, we'll make a play on the elk. Those bulls were a long way away and the wind was blowing directly to them. So we had to hike back to the truck, drive all the way around the valley, and then get the wind in our face. Once we did, we hiked in for a bit and picked up their tracks. After following their tracks for a bit, we located the bulls out in front of us. The two smaller bulls would get up occasionally to feed, but that biggest bull stayed bedded down in the junipers most of the day. We were hoping that big bull would eventually get up to feed and offer Antonello a shot. After sitting and watching them most of the day, the largest bull finally got to his feet, only to feed directly away from us. We then had to make a move and try and close the distance, hoping to get an opportunity before it got too late in the day. As the sun was going down, we finally caught up to those bulls and saw them out in front of us, feeding in a meadow. We got set up as quickly as we could, knowing this was the only chance we'd have that day before it got dark. Giving Back would also like to thank the following partners. That shot really caught me off guard as Antonello shot a lot quicker than I thought he was going to. We watched that bull as he fed away, but we weren't sure if he was even hit. We did hike over to where we last saw him and picked up a little bit of blood right before dark. Now, we didn't want to push that bull at all, so we backed out, headed back to camp to have dinner with the crew, and then decided to pick up the blood trail the next morning.
Once back in camp, Antonello introduced me to a beverage combination that I have never tried before. This is a beer, this is a Pepsi mix. That's a very, very nice. <laughs> sure. After a pretty sleepless night, we headed back into the area that very next morning. Now we still didn't even know what kind of shot was on this bull, but we got back in the area, we hiked into where we last saw him, and then we picked up a really good blood trail. Wow! <laughs> Beautiful! Okay! Beautiful! Beautiful, Larry! Beautiful! Oh, Lord! Beautiful! Wow! Oh. Wow! Beautiful! It was enough, but uh, say uh, 600 uh, yards. Yeah. Yes, I know. It's a good shot. It's a very, very strong for me. It's very <laughs> difficult for me. I don't shoot ma never, never this distance. Never. <laughs> hey, bye. <laughs> good, good, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh my god. The, yesterday did. Yeah. Yes, see? Yeah, he probably died last yeah. night. Okay. Hey, so Antonello and I here, we uh, got on some bulls last night and he got himself a shot at off 600 yards. Um, chased some blood for a little bit last night, but it got dark on us, so we decided to back off and come in this morning. And luckily we ended up finding this guy right here, not too far from where we last seen him. Ok, dopo, dopo aver sparato ieri questo bellissimo elk, che era il mio sogno da tanto tempo, tirato purtroppo diciamo un po' troppo lungo per diciamo, le mie abitudini, però era una condizione un po' particolare, quindi mi sono sentito di, di sparare, mi sono messo giù, e ho tirato il primo colpo è stato quello fatale preso un pochino basso però stiamo parlando di una distanza non la dico per correttezza ma diciamo molto molto lunga per me sono felicissimo si vede dal mio dal mio volto eh, diciamo la felicità si nota proprio dagli occhi dall'espressione e da tutto ho raggiunto il mio sogno eccolo qua il mio elk questa mattina dopo 
20 minuti di traccia che fortunatamente ce l'ha permessa il fatto di, di avere diciamo, un territorio, un terreno sabbioso e, e quindi siamo riusciti a seguire le tracce e il sangue ed eccolo qui, l'abbiamo trovato eh, morto e, e adesso ecco, è tutto mio, grazie. Once we started cutting on this bull, we saw the shot was very low in the stomach area. The bullets we were using, the hammer hunters from Hammer Bullets, had worked perfectly, pedaled and went up into the chest area, hitting both the liver and the lung. The bull was only 200 yards from where we saw the blood the night before. I am Antonello Merriweather. I believe uh, giving back. I am Isaac Baca and I believe in giving back. Thank you for watching this week. We'll see you next week on Giving Back.